Hello everybody. Um, this is Tessa here, uh, calling from Seattle. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, we're about melting out here. It's about 69 degrees right now, and woo! This summer is hot. Just kidding. Uh, so I decided to do a final prospectus lecture because the lit review lecture seemed really helpful to people. So we're going to about um, a description of what I'm looking for, things to remember, um, and helpful tips. Um, but before we get into the final prospectus, I'd like to remind you that we do have a final exam in this class. Um, it is open from August 6th at 8.30 in the morning to August 8th at 11.30 at night. Um, and, I, you know, the feedback on the exam, I've gotten that is pretty hard. It's not impossible, though. If you look at the final exam review checklist and you make sure that you're pretty strong, um, or at least familiar with all the concepts on that checklist, I think you'll do fine. Um, but again, I, I have heard some feedback that it's a little intense. Um, so don't forget to prepare for that. All right. Um, before I begin... Folks, I'm not big on following rubrics. I'm really not. I, I like for students to have more individuality in their work. Um, I don't want them to write to the rubric. However, um, this is a very large paper, and it's got a lot of components. And the rubric really just is a reminder of all the components that you need for this paper. I use it directly to grade your paper, okay? And so if you don't follow this rubric, if you don't make sure that you've got all the elements in the rubric, you're going to lose points. Um, it's called FOED 6980 Final Proposal Checklist. It's in the Intro Docs folder on iLearn. And it is now your best friend forever. Uh, sorry to any other best friends you may have, but it's over now. The rubric is your best friend. So please, please, please check it out. Okay, so as you guys know, the prospectus is the first three chapters of your research project. Uh, the final two chapters, the fourth chapter is called Findings, the, sec the fifth chapter is called Discussion, will be written next semester in Dr. Beach's class after you collect your data. Um, so, but for this prospectus, the first chapter is an introduction. It contains background and context, your research purpose, statement and questions. Um, it basically just lets your reader know what you're talking about uh, and the context in which you're talking about it. Second chapter is your lit review. All of you have turned one in and they've been graded. Um, so I encourage you to do to address the comments that I made on your lit review and edit those, fix those, and then just when you turn in your final paper, just stick that revised chapter in there for your chapter two. And if you make all those suggestions, you get five more points on the lit review. Finally, your third chapter is methodology. This is basically a chapter about what you're going to do, how you're going to collect your data. Um, it also... Um, talks about your biases and your subjectivity statement, um, and it's got to mention the ethical issues surrounding research, particularly trustworthiness. Um, anonymity is a huge deal uh, in any research, and you have to have a strong statement that, that shows your commitment to um, being trustworthy as a researcher. So, but, you know, there are handouts and activities about that that you can consult. So those are the three chapters. Um, what I'm looking for overall, I hate talking about this first one because, I, but probably every one of you has wondered how long is this paper supposed to be? And some of you have asked me that. Um, and I always give the most frustrating answer that it needs to be long enough. Okay, it just needs to be long enough for you to explain and detail your project. That's it. Um, another thing that I am looking for 
is correct APA format. Um, it really makes, I, I have been steeped in APA for so long that I expect it uh, when I read your papers. And um, when it is incorrect, it makes me stop reading and I fix it in my brain. And so that's the last thing you want your reader to do. You don't want your reader to be tripped up by formal elements like APA format. So please take the time to study the APA manual as you write. Um, you know, some of you are pros at APA, it seems like. Others of you struggle a little bit. Just make sure that you, that you get help. Um, there's also a site called Purdue Owl. That's Purdue as in Purdue University. And it's Owl, O-W-L. And it has a great APA guide. Um, so check that out too. If you either don't have the manual or if the manual just isn't helping you enough. Anyway, it just doesn't make sense to lose points for APA errors because the answers are out there. You just have to find them. I'm also looking, and this is probably the most important um, ungradable aspect of your paper. I, I'm looking for an engagement and an excitement about your topic. Um, and most of you have this covered. Um, most of you are so passionate about your topics and about your research. Um, and I love it so much. Um, it makes it worthwhile to teach this class when I see my students get really excited about research. Um, the way that that's going to show that engagement um, is that, <laughs> that you read the rubric and you understand what's expected. Um, I really want some good, relevant background and context that relates precisely to your problem. Um, I need to be able to tell that you read the course materials and that you understand them. Um, that's important because if you're not referencing what we've read, particularly like the Patton and the Marshall and Rossman, um, then my, I'm starting, I start to get nervous about how much you actually understand about research. So don't forget to cite those, especially in chapter three. I'm looking to see a thoughtfulness about how you're going to conduct your study. Um, ethical issues, again, very important. I need you to take them seriously because uh, people can get hurt. Um, you know, if you're talking to a teacher about her perceptions of school atmosphere and she thinks that the school atmosphere really sucks, um, she might there might be retaliation against her if if it got out, if the names of your participants are revealed. Um, you know, in some cases it could like cost someone their job. So, um, think about confidentiality, um, when you talk about ethical issues and when you, when you write your consent form. Also, and this should go without saying, there should be no evidence of plagiarism. Um, I run your papers through turnitin.com, uh, and it, there's no worse outcome for me to see a paper that's plagiarized. It just makes me so sad, honestly, because it means that the student wasn't engaged and didn't learn anything. So please, turn in a horrible paper rather than a plagiarized one because you're going to make more points and you're not going to make enough for the class. Okay, because ultimately, I will, 99%, I'll catch it. So, um... Stay away from copying. And if you have any questions about the difference between plagiarism and paraphrasing, plagiarism and summarizing, please, please, please shoot me an email and we'll have a conversation about it. So, things to remember. <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough that you should consult the rubric often. Before you turn it in, your paper, Make sure that you have done all the things on the rubric, at least. Um, another thing is that you must submit it to iLearn and to TK20. If you don't have a TK20 account, you need to get one pronto. 
Um, but I'm, my guess is most, uh, my guess is all of you have a TK20 account by now. Um, but you'll need to submit it both to TK20 uh, and iLearn. Your paper will not be graded until you submit to both. And I'll deduct points for every day it's late to either one of those. So it's important that you submit to both. Don't forget. Okay, so let's talk about appendices. Um, this is uh, an area of confusion for some students, but let me say first that the APA manual gives very explicit, clear instructions on how to include appendices in your paper. Um, your appendices go after the research page. They are the last part of your prospectus. Um, so it goes the body of your paper, the reference page, then the appendices. Um, each appendix is labeled by a letter, A, B, C, or D. Probably most of you will only have three. Um, and you must reference like appendix A, appendix B, appendix C in the body of your paper. Okay. Um, and now we're going to talk about what should be in each of those appendices. Um, and again, you're probably not going to be referencing them except in chapter three. The first appendix, appendix is your gatekeeper letter. Um, I've talked with some of you about this already, uh, but this is a document that you're going to have to give to your principal or to the central office um, that explains that you are wanting to do research in their school. Um, actually, the template that is available on iLearn um, is a letter that you have written for your principal to sign. It gives, it says the information that the principal, that you need to verify that the principal knows. That's the template in there. But when you present this to your principal or to the, to the central office, you'll need to explain what your study is about. Um, you'll talk about protecting the confidentiality of your participants, and you'll be talking about what you're going to do. For most of you, it's interviews and observations. Um, and it, and it, just in case anything happens, um, it is proof that you got permission to do this. Um, some districts, including Putnam County, do not allow you to simply go to the principal to get approval. You have to go to the central office. And if you're not comfortable with annoying them, uh, nagging them to sign it or to approve it, then... Uh, you need to get started now. Um, before you give that gatekeeper letter to anybody, please shoot it to me just so I can look it over and make sure that everything's copacetic. Um, and then you can give it to your principal. Um, when you turn it in, in your appendix, that's the appendix A, um, you'll just just attach a copy of a blank one. That's all I need to know. OK, um, if you have it signed, scan it in and put it in like that. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see signed ones, too. The second appendix is your interview questions. Uh, and basically, you just copy and paste them into an appendix. Um, that, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think all of you know about that. Finally, uh, you're going to include your consent form. A consent form is a document that you give to your participants before you interview them. And it states things like your name, uh, very vaguely what your study is about. You don't, you don't want to give your participants too much information that they feel like they need to tell you what you want to hear. Um, but you do need to tell them like, hey, I'm doing my research project on the benefits of recess. Um, and I'm just going to ask you some questions about how you feel about it. You need to assure confidentiality in your consent form. You need to provide contact info for both you and your advisor, who will be Dr. Beach. Um, you need to find his email address and his phone number. Um, and then you leave a line for them to sign um, that shows that they're agreeing to be in the study, that they understand what it's about, and, and this is important, that they can leave the study at any time. Um, there is a consent template somewhere on iLearn. 
if you have any questions about it, let me know. Uh, but that consent form should be in an appendix unsigned because you probably don't have any participants yet. And also because if you give me a signed copy of a consent form, I know the name of your participants or one of them anyway. And I don't want to know that. I, I, you should be the only person who knows that name. Okay, so just attach a blank one. All right, so that, that's appendix talk. Um, let me just remind you one more time about that rubric. Um, you can find it in the intro docs, and it is your best friend. Please, please, for my sake and for yours, stay close to that checklist, that rubric. All right, guys, well, that's all I've got. Um, that's all I can think of. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Please, please email anytime, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, the project is due at the end of this month to give me time to grade it before um, I have to turn in grades. And also, you'll still have access to iLearn uh, so you can see the feedback. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, to reading your final projects. You guys have worked so hard, and I appreciate your work. Uh, it's been a real pleasure uh, to, to read your thoughts and to, and to work with you guys in developing your research project. So um, PD and Junior are, are cheering you guys on um, in between naps. When they wake up, they're cheering you on. If not, they're dreaming about chasing rabbits or something. Um, all right. Well, that's all I've got. Uh, take care.